everybody oh welcome back I on Instagram the other day asked y'all to send all your questions my way and I am now going to answer them so let's just get right into it middle seat always gets arm seats arm rests she meant arm rests uh, yes <laughs> middle seat gets the arm rest was it hard going through the interview process again did I see any of my old instructors it was a little bit difficult just because it was slightly different than the first time around but I wouldn't really say that it was hard and then yes one of my old instructors actually is now like one of the head honchos in the training department so I saw him walking around all the time how do you choose how to choose an airline for beginners well, what you're gonna want to do is actually kind of like write down all the things that you want out of an airline or maybe where you want to live and then look at the airlines that offer those things so if flying internationally is an absolute must then you already know that you don't want to apply to any airlines that don't fly internationally if you know you want to live in Salt Lake City Utah there's only what like one or two I know Delta's base has a base out of Salt Lake City. I don't know anybody else. So you'll want to look into where airlines have bases so that way you can hopefully get based in a city that you actually want to live in. There's other things too, but those are kind of like the main ones at least that stick out to me. I got a lot of people asking why I quit as well as why I am now flying again um, in regards to my migraines. That is the main reason that I quit originally. Um, I was getting debilitating migraines almost every time I flew. There's only so many migraine medications that I can take because of other issues that I also have going on. But about a year after I quit, the FDA did approve a couple more preventative prescriptions for migraines, one of them being an injection. So there are more options now that made me and my doctor a little bit more comfortable with me going back to flying for the long term like rest of my life <laughs> type situation which me leads me into the next question that I had a lot of was why like what made me want to be a flight attendant to begin with I just love flying I love flying I love traveling I love interacting with people from all over the world um and being a flight attendant is one of the best ways to do that do you need to know how to swim before training most airlines don't require it however I would recommend at least not having like a fear of swimming because you are going to do a raft drill you are going to end up getting in a pool at least once during training and heaven forbid anything actually does happen while you're flying it's just nice to know how to do can you talk about motion or air sickness does it affect a lot of flight attendants who didn't know they would experience it while working so there's a period of time for pretty much most everybody that hadn't flown frequently before it, it takes some getting used to You're, it's not a natural thing for the body to go through on a regular basis i think for most people it ends up taking about a month of kind of regular flying for their body to get used to it and to kind of adjust to it um, I had a lot of questions pertaining to the flight attendant schedule, in particularly mine. I will be on reserve for the first year and then I will go into what's called rotating reserve. I'll have one month on, one month off, and I'll do that for a couple years. And then it'll be a different rotation until I can just solely hold a line. My schedule is, I know what I, days I have off and that varies from month to month most of us don't really have a set schedule i also had quite a few people ask if i was able to kind of jump back in with my same seniority no unfortunately i was not so i had to start all over which was a little sad but it's okay worth it in the long run what is the longest flight i have ever worked nine and a half hours charlotte to sao paulo airbus or boeing I like to work Airbus, but as a passenger, I like to fly Boeing. I had quite a few questions about pay. You do get an hourly pay, which is based off of how many flight hours or like hours in flight, so door open to door close. Um, that's what your hourly pay is, but then there's also extra pay if you work an international flight, if you're the lead flight attendant, if you work in a galley on a like longer haul flight. There's per diem for being away from base. So there's a whole bunch of extras. As a reserve, you're guaranteed at least 75 hours a month. If you're not a reserve, then you have to actually work those 75 hours a month or 50 hours or 100 or whatever it is you prefer to work. You have to actually work it. As a reserve, I could only fly one trip and still get paid that 75 hours, which is kind of nice. Also, in terms of salary, when you start out, it's not the best. <laughs> it's not the greatest. But the longer you're with the company, you 
uh, get a pay raise every year. Once you're with the company for a while, like you can, you can make some pretty good money. It's not bad. You're not gonna be rich by any means. But if you love to travel, then it's worth not making a bunch of money in order to get paid to travel. I read a news article that airlines aren't making passengers wear masks. From what I've seen, most of the airlines have plans to require passengers to wear masks as well as crew. Top three things that passengers can do to make a flight attendant's day better. Chocolate or candy, food of some sort, <laughs> gift card to Starbucks or food of some store sort or Target, thank us, like actually thank us, take this time to say, hey, I know y'all might be having a long day, so I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you and I know what you're prepared to do and I know that people can be really mean, so I just wanted to say thank you. Instead of just as you're walking off, hey thanks, bye. Actually like kind of take the time to stop and appreciate us. Mm -mm -mm. Do I have any updates about the 737 Mac? No, I do not. Honestly, y'all will probably find out right along with us. Because <laughs> usually when, when we're told stuff, it's going out about to the public about the same time. Favorite destination to lay over in? Well, London is my all-time like favorite city. It's just kind of like a second home at this point in time. That's how much I love it. <sighs> but you can't really go wrong with Paris. I don't know, it's hard. I think it kind of depends on, apart from London, it kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. If I want to explore, then a European city for sure, hands down. If I want to relax, then give me somewhere on a beach, basically. <laughs> I had a lot of people ask what my favorite aircraft is, and I'd probably have to say the Dreamliner. Yeah, I got to fly on it once. I haven't been able to work it yet. I'm qualified to work it, but as a nice aircraft. How is it being a flight attendant and having a cute little pup to take care of? Luckily, I live with my boyfriend and our friend. They take care of him when I'm not around, but it's always nice to be able to come home and then he's so excited that I'm home, like extra excited. Right now, he's uh, cuddled up. Bubba? <laughs> Hi, baby. What is training really like? It's stressful. I'm not gonna lie. I think most people that go through flight attendant training will agree. It is simultaneously some of the best and worst weeks of your life. It's hard to explain unless you've ever, unless you've been through it. It's it's very stressful. You don't sleep a lot, but you make some absolutely amazing friends that will be your friends for the rest of your life. How many people have I seen thrown up? One. I have seen one person throw up. It was on my second trip ever as a flight attendant and he threw up on my jump seat. That was, it was great. I mean, I've known that passengers like have thrown up. They've either gone to the bathroom and like I've heard it, which is <laughs> But I've only ever physically seen one passenger throw up and had the pleasure of having it be on my jump seat. Any stranger scary experiences while flying? I had the turkey bacon story guy that was, uh, can I just say, sidebar, that when y'all like leave little, somebody actually put, did the, ah, gosh, I can't even remember what the question was now, but it was like a throwback or a little nudge at the turkey bacon story. I just have to say, y'all like, I love it. I mean, it wasn't a fun time at all, but, the fact that all of us can like laugh about the turkey bacon situation now and that y'all will like leave little comments about it, it makes my day. So thank you for that. Other than that, I really haven't had any like stranger scary experiences. Knock on wood. I've been pretty fortunate in that department. My mom asked what question I'm asked the most. Thanks, mom. Honestly, it's probably a split between flight attendant pay and the schedule. What is my ideal customer? A nice one. Do you get lonely on layovers? Sometimes I do. Yeah, especially places that I've been to a lot and there's not really anything to do at that, or the only thing to do is things that I've already done. And at that point in time, it would be nice to have somebody with me that I can show around or like spend the time with. Yeah, sometimes it does get pretty lonely. I had quite a few questions asking about the age to be hired. Most airlines in the United States are 20, 21. There are a few that will hire you at 19, but the majority of them are gonna be 20 or 21 years old. How difficult is it to be a flight attendant and a student? Surprisingly not that hard if all the classes are online because you actually have quite a bit of 
quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit of downtime because you're either like sitting at home waiting to be called or not working or you're sitting in a hotel room not working. So it's not too hard actually. Once the world opens up, wanna show me around Charlotte? Uh, absolutely freaking lootly, girl. Hop your cute little tush on over to Charlotte and I will show you around, faux show. Sure. Do you always work during the holidays? Can you choose to take off and be with family? Mm, no, no, nah, it's pretty much a guarantee that you are going to be working or you need to be available to work around the holidays. Most holidays you end up celebrating on a different day because you're working on that holiday. Can you raise a family and be a flight attendant? Um, absolutely. You just kind of have to learn how to adjust things. If you want to see somebody that is uh, totally rocking it, um, I would definitely go follow my friend Allie over at Wonderfully Allie because she is now a mom of three. She does a really good job of documenting how she's able to be both a mom and a flight attendant. What do promotions look like for flight attendants? <gasps> Is that Amazon? I think my Amazon package just rolled in. <laughs> Y'all will find out about that soon. Okay, um, promotions for flight attendants. Like I mentioned earlier, you do get a raise every year, so your salary will start to increase. I wouldn't really say that there's necessarily like promotions, but you can do other things. So at my airline in particular, I can be signed up to help out in the crew room. I can sign up to be on the image team where I go to different flights and just kind of make sure that flight attendants are looking how they're supposed to be looking. I can sign up to be a trainer and I'll fly to Dallas and help out with training. There's a bunch of different things. I mean, you could be signed up to be part of the food and beverage group. Like there's a whole bunch of different opportunities. Do you have to wear a lipstick? No. There are some airlines, but it's usually the like Emirates or some of the European airlines. But for the United States ones, they encourage it, um, but it's not required. I fly Asia, US a lot. What is the etiquette for asking for snacks or drinks on long hauls? We have a little snack station set up um, in the galleys. So if you need to like, it's a great time to also stand up and like stretch your legs out a little bit, but you can walk back. There's always gonna be at least one flight attendant in the back. So you are more than welcome to get up, stretch your legs, walk back, ask for a drink or snacks or something, do a loop around the cabin and sit back down. Try to shy away from ringing the call bell just because if other people are sleeping, then it might wake them up. But you know, if you're in a middle seat and it's kind of hard to get up, then we're gonna understand. Like, we're not gonna be annoyed with you for ringing the call bell because you were thirsty on a 10 hour flight. Like you're fine. Have I ever thought about learning to fly myself sitting at the pointy end of the plane? Yes, I have actually. It is something that I am very interested in pursuing. I don't know if it's really realistic, but it is something that I would absolutely love to do. So there were a couple of questions in regards to COVID-19 and what is kind of happening. So all I really have to say about that is each airline is kind of doing what they believe is the most appropriate but also most kind of realistic in execution. And a lot of the airlines in the United States are now requiring passengers to wear masks as well as the crews and gate agents. For me, flying during this, I, I felt pretty uncomfortable, especially when people don't wear masks because I don't know what they've been exposed to. And as a flight attendant, it was my responsibility to wear a mask because I have been exposed to a lot more than what a lot of the passengers have. So there was a very high chance that I uh, was carrying the virus without knowing it. And I did not want to go ahead and pass that along to my passengers or my fellow crew members. From somebody who is in like the front lines of it and is, interacting with the general public in very small quarters, please, please, please just wear a mask. Like you don't know if you have or haven't been exposed to this virus um, unless you've been tested. If you wear the mask, you're helping to prevent the spread of the virus. It's not because you're afraid of it, of catching it. It's because you're helping prevent it in case you are a carrier, an asymptomatic carrier. It has nothing to do with you. It's about protecting the people around you um, and just having that common courtesy for your fellow humans. So that is my two cents on that. I personally am glad that the airlines are requiring um, 
employees and passengers to wear the mask to help reduce the spread. Um, my airline is also like deep cleaning and sanitizing the aircrafts. Sanitizing of all the major touch points, so like seat belts, armrests, for the flight attendants are jump seats those get de like sanitized in between every flight but then the entire aircraft gets sanitized every time that it stays the night somewhere for me that's been really reassuring however if you don't have to fly right now then please don't do it because that is one of the biggest things and how this virus has been able to spread so quickly worldwide that's my two cents on that without getting too political about it all right guys this has been a lot longer than what I was expecting. I had a lot more questions than what I initially thought that I had. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hopefully answered the majority of the questions. If not, I might have to be doing another Q&A soon. So I guess you can go ahead and if you have any questions that I didn't answer, then leave those down below or go find this picture on Instagram and put your question on there. In the next week or so, I'll kind of check back and see if there's enough questions to do another sit down Q&A. Oh gosh, that was closer than I thought it was. All right. Well, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, work hard, be kind, spread good vibes. I love you all. Goodbye.